What's up YouTube, Sean the Gamer here, and I just want to like take uh, the time out while I have it to just vomit my brain out to you guys on my thoughts, my concerns going into WrestleMania season. Like I have some ideas, some thoughts, and some speculations like everybody else does, but you know, I like to put mine on video for you guys to have discussions on. Yes, we are on NoDQ again. Um, shout out to those guys again, like I said. Uh, follow them on Twitter and all that stuff, especially when they're live tweeting during events. They have the access to go to a lot of these shows and things like that. So uh, if you want live reactions, live results, you know, follow me, of course. Everything linked down in the description as well, soft plug. And if you're new here, subscribe to this channel as well. Uh, I don't really like to dabble in, you know, pure, pure articles and things like that. Somebody like JD does that. He'll go find a lot of interesting news related stuff and break it down in his interpretation and what he thinks. I just like to uh see what the what the uh creative plans are or see what creative does on TV live like while watching SmackDown Raw, come up to my own deductive reasoning and you know, give my own hypothesis and things like that. And most of the time what I come up with in my head is what they nine times out of 10 end up doing in some way on the show. So it's just fun for me. I like to call myself Sean the Prophet on you on Twitter. No like bragging or anything like that. It's just, you know, when you when, uh, personally have such a good track record of, you know, quote unquote, calling what they're going to do, you know, it's just a little front, fun little gimmick to put myself under like why did I stumble on that a little bit but like I said a lot of things I want to talk about we got the little cheap little plug out the way and let's jump right into this uh let's first start into my concerns about raw oh no 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 we're going to talk about my ideas I have for smackdown then we're going to dive into my concerns about raw then we're going to finish up with some nxt stuff because we do have the spoilers right there so uh First time in a long time, I'm going to delve into NXT spoilers just to see if I can match up my predictions. Oh, you know, like I was saying, how I like to predict and see what's going on with what's actually going on on NXT TV. And I planned on doing this video a while ago. I know I'm doing a lot of pre-talking before I actually jump into my thoughts and stuff like that. But like I said, I want to vomit. I need to vomit real quick. So, uh, uh, what was I about to say? I don't even remember anymore, so it's not important. So... Um, oh, I was going to do this video a little while ago, but with all the things going on personally in my life and the way they were booking stuff on Raw and things like that, I just was like, maybe I just need to wait. Maybe I just need to wait. You know, I, I give out some quick opinions and quick funny thoughts on Twitter, another plug, uh, live tweeting throughout Raw, SmackDown, NXT. I almost did it again. I almost said ECW, but, um... <clears throat> Now that I have the time and the energy to do this in my nice John Cena shirt that I barely wear because, you know, I'm not that much of a John Cena fan. It was just on sale at Hot Topic for $5 and I was like, might as well. So, um, let's jump right into this and talk about, uh, some ideas and things I have about SmackDown and the direction they're going. So, uh, first things first, let's talk about all the women stuff because the women are absolutely taking over SmackDown, literally like the first hour of SmackDown, if not longer, excluding a few uh, minutes given to the tag team division for the Usos to cut that awesome promo, was dominated heavily by the women, and it was not a bad thing at all. It was highly entertaining from Naomi having to come out to Daniel Bryan to surrender her title because she won't be able to defend it within the next 30 days, so... We'll talk about that too. We, all this kind of ties into like the things that SmackDown are doing right are like the complete polar opposite of what uh, Raw is doing and how they're doing it wrong. If that made any sense, I probably worded that wrong. Like everything that SmackDown is doing right, Raw is doing the complete opposite of. So, especially when it comes to the women, as you can see, as uh, the what would that be? Today is Thursday now, so the February twenty first episode of uh, SmackDown show is. We started off, like I said, with Naomi vacating her title, which was very heart wrenching. Even if you uh just been following Naomi for the past two years, uh when she started wearing the glow shoes and started getting a little bit more over uh as a singles and things like that, ever since pretty much ever since her split with Cameron, uh a while back, if you remember Cameron, so um 
her journey has been one that I've been following ever since, you know, I believe, wasn't she on one of those episodes of Tough Enough or something like that? She's been there for a while, entering probably like a little around seven more, seven or seven plus, but her improvement, like she was always good in the ring, like, like I said, she stood out, like I said in my, I keep saying like I said, I gotta stop doing that, but uh, like I previously mentioned in my SmackDown review, her journey has been something of being there when the women's were bad and always like being that highlighted gym. Nobody in that time where it was the Nikki Bella era, when most of the superstars were getting like lukewarm to no reaction at all, mainly the divas back then, Naomi always had a little bit more in her pop and things like that maybe because she looked good maybe because of her dance moves but it was always a little bit more or maybe just because she was associated with this weird character in the funk adapt in the front of the back I don't know, the funk adaptal back then uh better known as tyrus now so uh it was just her journey and then finally watching her it was a random episode of smackdown like bailey won a random episode of raw but it was at least built to for a few weeks you know Naomi coming back from injury and her even acknowledge that that I don't want to say it forgives it, but it makes it a little bit better when she personally comes out and asks her own realism with her injuries and stuff. Like she said, like three four weeks ago, when before she won the title at uh, the chamber, was look, I know my career has been played by injuries. I know you guys have been behind me this whole time, and you've definitely got behind me now. So I'm not gonna let you down. And then that's that that build to that match at uh, Elimination Chamber, which was really good it wasn't no you know blow out the water type match but it was a really good match between alexa and her and she finally picked up the w after like seven long years of struggling and not really getting a chance because of backstage politics or her own injuries and now she finally got the title so say all that because now she's on the road to wrestlemania you know not actually losing the title but unable to defend it so she has a right to be like yeah of course she has our automatic rematch uh, i don't know about automatic rematch calls but she has some validation of why she has a shot at the title whether either shane or daniel possibly daniel at this point because i see shane getting involved with aj styles we'll talk about that in a little bit um uh where was i coming out saying look you do deserve it but you got to earn it maybe like going through WrestleMania, like not really having a set number one. And con- no, that won't work because by the time she gets back, it's going to be like two or three weeks left to a WrestleMania. So maybe they could do like some type of gauntlet match where she comes out first or seconds and run the gauntlet beating like a Becky Lynch, Mickey James, uh, Becky Lynch, Mickey James, who else is on that roster? Natalia, Nikki, you know what I'm saying? And then proving that, yeah, I've been gone, but I've always had what it takes to be better than all of these girls. And now give me my title back and then wins it back in our hometown of Orlando, Florida at WrestleMania. So they did jump the gun a little bit early by putting the belt on her. But I can't really blame them because Naomi, when your brand split kind of like limits with your what you're doing and you're trying to tell a story maybe it was the right time for her to win it but just not that way like when people say time we'll talk about this a little bit more when it comes to bailey in her situation it doesn't actually mean like that moment in time sometimes it does sometimes it does but in a situation like naomi's this was her moment to start building more and more towards wrestlemania as you know like how she said she cut that promo and then maybe if they didn't shotgun her winning the title, maybe she could have been, been involved in something different at Elimination Chamber to prevent that injury and help, kept her healthy going into WrestleMania. But either way it goes, even even this way, I think probably it's a little bit better for her, even if this injury is like legit, but it's not that serious. Like a lot of people, might, might as well bring up the article. Like I did read like an Instagram post of her saying the injury was bad and she tore some stuff, but um, let's first do a little work and roll again. And with Tamina returning in action over the weekend, okay, oh, Tamina is back. I did see some stuff about that. Wrestling goes over the finish of the little, 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 little maneuver. 
Well, she did. Yeah, I always, I always figured that split legged moonsault was something to do with maybe she just it's the way she lands on the ropes. Like I always figured that her injuries, because they're always in her leg, has to do something with that split legged moonsault. But yeah, this confirms it. So, uh, at first, the company didn't want to sign it or not. She will be unable to return to WrestleMania. However, recovering shouldn't be very long. So yeah, that's good news. So like I said. That's like forty something days. She's a WWE superstar. She's in the best care in the best hands. So forty days for Naomi may literally just be the thirty days that she needed before she could defend a title. If that makes any sense to you guys, so let's just go back up to the main WWE uh, page. That way, just we can click on something else. But you see what I'm saying there? Like it just builds more emotional investment. So. Speaking of emotional investment, we can move on to like the most emotionally charged, I'll put that in air quotes as well, feud on SmackDown, which was Nikki Bella versus Naomi. And yeah, I'm, I, I kind of glossed over Becky Lynch winning the title because I want to talk about this match first and some ideas that were thrown around by JD from New York. I don't bring him up a lot because, you know, he got some good ideas and great minds think alike sometimes, but this is solely his idea, so I'm giving him all the credit for it. And this is why I used to like, well, I like to, because I kind of know when everybody's going to upload. I know all my favorite YouTubers and content creators schedules, you know, because I have them like, you know, notified and it, they're all pretty consistent. So I like to try to get mine immediately after the program ends, but sometimes I'm just not able to, whether I'm tired or I'm out or things like that. But now I'm definitely going to pick up the effort to start bringing out more content before everybody else does in like the best way possible. So be on the lookout for that coming. Hopefully in the near future, I'm not gonna make any promises like next week, I'm gonna do it. And then next week it's not done. So the whole Natalia Nikki feud, like I said, the most emotionally charged feud is probably in the WWE right now. Um, other than the, fr the friendship debacle on raw, who see, keep getting that in a second as well. But the Nikki Bella versus Natalia match is a great example of how to reutilize talent that has been around for the longest. Like, you don't necessarily need young versus new talent when you have, I don't want to call this organic, but storylines that just kind of seemingly have been there for the longest, especially when it comes to something like Natalia versus Nikki. Their long standing freshman friendship. <laughs> French, what I say, Frenchman? Uh, in an in jealousy because apparently Nikki Bella, not Nikki Bella, Natalia has always uh, despised the fact that Nikki Bella pretty much gets everything she wants just because of her looks and things like that and yada yada yada. We all know how the uh, storyline played out. And this match right here warranted a great bookend uh, or at least a solid 3.5 or 4 bookend to this feud because they tore into each other. The match was really, really good. It, sto it told the story and it set up a another story. So you're literally ending one program going right into another one where nobody can technically say they're lost in the shuffle because you have Natalia who can now go on this whole, yeah, I put down the so-called queen of the SmackDown division, the so-called longest reigning champion. I've always been better than her, yada, yada, yada. She can do all that. And then that can get somebody annoyed, say maybe a returning Tamina, as we just saw there, who can say, look, you're not the only, yeah, Nikki Bella may not be real WWE second generation uh, lineage, but, you know, I got real lineage in me just like you, and I know I'm better than you. So... All that could lead into a different storyline. And also you have the uh, the seemingly confirmed mixed tag match between Nikki Bella and Nikki Bella and John Cena versus The Miz and Maurice because of the, at least the past couple of weeks, every time those two got the brawling, Natty and Bella, Maurice was unfortunately in a way, my poor Maurice. But now Maurice started to get tired of it and came out and attacked her with a lead pipe. So, and the Miz had to come out and stop that match was brilliant. You know, that's, it's, it's simple storytelling that 
late season that we all kind of figured out what's happening through spoilers and leaks, but it was the way we got there that was really, really entertaining and good. And it, like I said, the this whole little feud could eventually break off into, of course, one, but now another with Natty spawning off this rivalry. And that's how rivalries are supposed to work. That's how these little storylines are supposed to work. And not to mention, this is a B storyline, not even a B, but like the A2 storyline of the women's division on SmackDown. And that's really, really good. And you have a, the third little, uh, I guess you call it the B storyline with Mickey James and Mickey James and Alexa Bliss, but more importantly, Mickey James. Did I say Mickey Bliss? I hope I did. But so you have that whole situation. It's like everybody's being utilized on SmackDown. And then there are so many possibilities. And like I was saying, reference JD from New York, this would have been a good situation to still put the women's championship on the line in this match because it was vacated. So it will still make sense. So it just give a little extra oomph. Like, look, you ladies have been fighting. We have this vacated title. You guys have been in this heated rivalry, and like once we get this over with, the winner not only can say they ended this, but you know now you're the women's champion. Now you actually have something to fight for instead of fighting each other. That made a lot of sense. Jesus Christ, <laughs> that just blew my mind, and I'm high right now, so that just blew my mind. Like wow. So you know what I'm saying there were there's so many possibilities in the women's division on. SmackDown. Let's move on to the tag team division, which really is there, but isn't like they have the tag team bodies and they try to utilize them as much as possible, but there's no real drama going on in the SmackDown tag team division. Like you have the alphas who are like desperate for competition. Like I, I, maybe this is the storyline. Maybe this is the storyline and we're just not see, seeing it. Like the alphas are like desperate for competition ever since they won a the title. They want to be fighting champions, but they don't really have the competition on the brand to uh, satisfy that itch of competing. So now you have the new Usos who are just, you know, battle rapping. Like, like I said, conceded and hit me holla off while and out. <clears throat> who've always been a great tag team, always been one of my favorite tag teams, second favorite tag team, as, uh, besides Breezango, duh. So everything is just, you know, hopefully we, with the with the, this new, blah, 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 with this new fire from the Usos and the Alphas, just pure wrestling ability, and they're both really good on the mic as well. If you, if you watch Talking Smack and things like that, your backstage promos are really good. Those two can have a really interesting storyline. The only problem is they they don't have I don't they have good tag teams on SmackDown. It's just nobody nobody in the audience is invested in them. So it's harder to try to make the Usos versus the Alphas look better when they should be dominating every team on the roster, but technically they already did that. You see what I'm saying? So there needs to be some more inner feuds within the well, basically, what I'm trying to say is what they did with the women, they didn't do for the tag team division, and maybe that's why they haven't did it just because of that two hour time constraint. Which on SmackDown is kind of a problem because we don't get to see everybody we need to see because we want to see them. I want to see Breeze Angle, I love the VOD villains. I, I can learn to at least not like the Ascension as heels, and you see what I'm saying? Tyler Breeze is just and Breeze Angle is fun. They have seven tag teams on SmackDown. If you, if you haven't noticed, you have the two main with the Alphas and the Usos, Slater and Rhino, Breezango, The Ascension, uh, the VOD villains, and I thought I had the other, or did I already say them? So whatever, it's five or six or seven, so whatever. The point is they have enough tag teams to have some other sub storylines going on in that division. So, wow, that was my Simon Miller. So, <laughs> um... And to move on to like the mid card main event scene that all came together in the battle royal that happened. So <clears throat> just to keep this a little bit short, so we can <sighs> rant about Raw. You had the Dean Ambrose Baron Corbin feud continue, and that moved on. More uh, seeds were planted for Miz and Cena when Cena eliminated Miz, and Miz got 
uh, the one up on Cena by coming in while the wrestler described they worried about Dean Ambrose to eliminate Cena. Take that fast, had to get it out before I messed up. So, um, and then you have the whole main story with the main event picture and a little, the, the little mini story of the Dolph Ziggler stories is going on as well. So, just three and a half storylines in one match, and that's what these battle royals, Royal Rumbles, are supposed to do is just like bring everything together and either possibly help continue stuff or bring new elements into that situation. So really no complaints. Uh, the biggest complaint that everybody's been having is like the whole <clears throat> AJ hit first situation, but it was meant to be that way, but it just didn't come out the way they wanted it to look. So it was supposed to be them doing that. And like everybody's been speculating, as you can read in this article, I just glanced at it. I can already see what I'm about to talk about is the whole idea of, Luke Harper, there's there's many ways to do this. You can just say, they're going to have the match next week. You can have, well, okay, since they're going to have the match next week, the one way they could have did it was just next week, come on, have Shane come out and say, look, AJ, I don't know what the fuck everybody else is talking about, but you clearly here for it first. And, you know, he can say that in this cool Shane McMahon hipster type way. And then AJ just gets pissed. Says you need to watch your back, yada yada yada, blah blah blah, something like that. And he just goes in and attacks Shane. I think I mentioned this on the SmackDown review, so go back and watch that in full details. But basically, uh, lays at Shane now. Shane is off TV for like a week or two. He comes back, explains like, yeah, I know who attacked me. It was AJ and me. AJ, you want you want something to do with Mania? You want something to do with Mania? Well, you got me at Mania, so something like that. But they can do this. What they're about to do now is have Luke Harper and AJ Styles. AJ miraculously wins, but Shane comes out like, here comes money, and do the exact same thing that I just said. Like, I don't know what you're, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't know what the fuck everybody else saw, but you hit the ground first. So I don't care that you won this match. Luke Harper is going to WrestleMania, and then everybody's like, Luke. And then AJ just, from there, goes on the attack on Shane McMahon, and security has to get him off. Maybe they can brawl a little bit like, Yada yada yada, or even, or even better. Next week you have Shane McMahon host Talking Smack, and then after that decision, you know they do twelve hour live, and then they can set up Talking Smack. Yada yada yada, and then during Talking Smack, or even, or even during two o five live on or setting up for Talking Smack, it could be like breaking news. AJ just went batshit crazy on Shane McMahon. And then you can have that going on. And then going into Talking Smack, they can have this is this is what's going on. This is what's going to happen. And then they can set up the match for AJ and Shane at WrestleMania there. So it doesn't matter how they're going to do it. It's going to be AJ versus Shane at WrestleMania. They're just a, That was just a couple of ways they can do it. But either way, even if Luke Harper just straight up win the match or if there is some type of or, or this could work too if they want to have everything like play together. Listen to this one. I just came up with this one too. My high is going away and my mind is racing right now. So you can't. This is this is this is the excitement you get when you talk about SmackDown because there's so many good possibilities. Let's talk about Raw in a few minutes. So in that match, AJ versus Luke, you can have like around the end of the match, last five six minutes, you can have Orton. You know, do his old Bray Wyatt new S type deal, you know, where he comes in and he's like on the apron or something and he distracts Luke Harper and he goes to try to attack Luke Harper. Bray and Bray can be out there too to distract the referee. So while this is happening, you can have Randy in the ring fighting Luke Harper. AJ's probably probably just got laid out by a discet lariat or a super kick or something like that. And then while Randy Orton's about to hit an RKO, you could, I was about to get up and do it. Like, you can, when you have AJ getting up stumbling and shit, he can just run right into an RKO. And then that, in turns, Luke Harper kicks, you know, kick Bryant out the way, kicks uh, Randy Orton out the ring. One, two, three. AJ Styles loses. Bray goes to WrestleMania. And then two things are going to happen right here. Uh, split A is going to be that now, Luke Harper is going to WrestleMania, which is 
What? Luke Harper versus Bray Wyatt for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. What? So let that sink in for a second. And then I'm pretty sure there's going to be a Wyatt family member, whether it's Bray or it's Orton, on Talking Smack that week too. This is going to be a jam-packed episode of Talking Smack I'm making. See, I'm just making story for WWE and they better be listening. I know they are. Anyways, um, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton comes in like, Look, I know you don't want to face me, but now my fallen brother wants my title. I need you to reinstate your Rumble victory to help ensure that this title stays with the true Wyatt family. And then Orton is like, okay. <laughs> Anything you say, Massa. So, <laughs> Orton's all like, he accepts. And then, in the leaks to come, the leaks, the weeks to come, even where there is a week, two weeks, oh, like two weeks before WrestleMania happens, you have this epic back and forth between the three Wyatt family members. Eric Rowan can come back for some reason just to make it a tag team match. Holla, holla, holla. Hall of Fame right there. Teddy Long needs to be on that episode. So, have a tag team match. Uh, Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan. Put the brothers back together. And then versus Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. Remember, this is like two weeks away from WrestleMania now. So, uh, maybe like two or three weeks away from WrestleMania. Or a couple of weeks from now. Either way, go. You can have Randy Orton in that tag tag team match. I don't know where I started singing that. It's supposed to be the Teddy Long impression. I just... In that match, you can have Randy Orton turn on Bray Wyatt to give Luke Harper the pinfall on Bray Wyatt because this should be the first time that he gets pent uh, since the Elimination Chamber uh, just to put a little bit more credibility on Luke Harper. And then next week, or the week following that, you can have like Luke, Luke and Eric like, we told you, we tried to warn you, yada, yada, yada. That this is nothing that he was nothing but a snake in the grass, about a lot of puns and all that, blah blah blah. So then you can have like the week before WrestleMania, like Bray, like actually like looking over his shoulder while he's cutting his promos, like, or eh, I I thought I could trust you. I thought you turned over and you know, then a new leaf or a new beard or something like that. So you know, and then just have like that creepy Orton like, I'm stalking you, I want my title. You should have known better, you dummy. So <laughs> like that. Um, and then side story B, but that's pretty much it for that story. Like, and then having to be a triple threat match at WrestleMania for WWE title. The Wyatt, you know, if we're going to get a shield uh, battle royal, then we, we need a Wyatt battle royal, you know, minus Rowan and Braun Braun. So I think that's a good idea right there. Let me know in the comment section below. And then the split B from that main event next week is going to be you know, everything that we discussed with AJ and Shane, like, you know, everything is the same, say same, AJ screwed, Shane won't do nothing about it, AJ gets pissed. Simple, simple storytelling. Now, 30 minutes into this video, let's, all my enthusiasm, all my hype. H2O. Gotta love it. Uh, so, Raw. Where do we start with Raw? Do we start with the women or the lack of? First of all, where the fuck is Emelina? Or not even Emma. I love her. Emelina. Where the fuck is Emma? It is officially going on 19 weeks now and we have not seen Emma. We've seen Emelina, you know, do her little groundhog appearance like, Nah, I'm good. <laughs> so, we saw that. Where is Summer Rae? Alicia Hawk. Spend more time on 205 Live. Um, Nia Jax is not getting the credit she deserves or the push that she deserves. I know a lot of people aren't really keen on her skills and things like that, but it's there. It, it's there. Um... And then your main event is really Stephanie McMahon, Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Charlotte. 
Oh, Dana Brooks there too. So <laughs> Dana Brooks is just there now. <sighs> the potential of greatness has already been lost, lost a long time ago. So the root. I don't know why I had to do that. The root of the problem all started the first time they decided to put the belt on Sasha Banks. Because at that time, why, why, why? <laughs> Just I, I, I still don't have no logical reason on why Sasha Banks beat Charlotte to begin with to start this whole loop cycle that they're doing. Now, I was listening to, I know, I know, the Joe Cronin show when he had a, uh, I think it was their State of the Union, and they brought up a very interesting point. And that point is, with the exception of Mickey James and Victoria and a few other wrestlers, Gail Kim could probably even be in that category, the average women's wrestler's lifespan depending on main roster or where, you know, where they get settled, whether it's WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, anything like that, is about three to six years most, possibly seven. Three to six years. And that's why they're hot shotting, trying to build Charlotte up the way they are, which I understand that. I understand that some of these women don't have as long as lifespan as the men, and that's mostly y'all fault. <laughs> that's mostly y'all fault when it comes to WWE, because y'all don't y'all never gave these women a real chance to shine except a select handful, which you're doing now. So <clears throat> you say all that, and you think, okay, so that gives a little bit of clarification of why they hot shot it the title so much. No, the fuck it doesn't. <laughs> no, the fuck it doesn't. It's like. When title reigns are determined by what you did in that span. And that's why a lot of people have adopted the term transitional champions. Because if your reign was nothing or you didn't have it for long enough for it to mean anything. And then somebody else gets it and immediately does something else with the belt. And your reign is subsequently forgot about. You were just a placeholder. You were just there so they didn't vacate the title.